Another little bit of a different video set up here. This is actually my computer, clearly sitting in the studio. I'm gonna answer Matthew's question about check engine lights. I'm gonna actually read you guys the whole question. I've gotten vehicles in that state customer states check engine light is on, customer approved diagnosis, but when I get in the vehicle, the light isn't on. I proceed as usual for diagnosis, but I was wondering why sometimes the light turns itself off. So Matthew, great question. Dude, Matthew, first of all, um, Keep rocking and rolling, man. I think you're doing a really great job coming along as a, as a growing technician. So props to you for that. But his question basically is, why does a check engine light sometimes turn itself off? So the reason the check engine light comes on, and I actually got a video coming out that I've done uh, with Allstate. You guys may have seen a few of those videos, uh, hence the, the really cool, where is it, backdrop here, um, that talks way in depth, like way more in depth about check engine lights that I'm going to get into today. So if that video is live, I'm going to post a link so you guys can check that out. But the, the short answer is this. So the check engine light comes on because the car has failed some type of test, whether that is a continuous monitor like misfires or engine timing, or a non-continuous monitor like the catalyst or the EVAP system or you know, air fuel ratio, that kind of stuff. So it runs all these tests and when it sees a problem, it fails the test. For the most part, it has to fail these tests two times in order for the light to actually illuminate telling the driver there's a problem. Now, one failure, us as technicians, we can go in with our diagnostic equipment and we can look at that and see that. We can see that the light's on and we can get the code generally, not always, but generally with one failure. But in order for the light to come on, it does take two failures, which is called a two-trip monitor. So our light's on for the customer. Let's say it's EVAP, right? We'll just use the, the gas cap example. Let's say it's EVAP, the light's on, customer brings a car in, you go out, you drive the car in, the light's not on. Well, at some point that car has passed the test three times. Three times the pass of passing of these tests, whatever test had failed, will turn the light off, right? So now the customer feels like maybe they don't have a problem, the light's not on. But again, us as technicians, we can go in with our diagnostic equipment and we can look at that. We can see what the fault is still with three passes, but the light's just not illuminated. Now, there's another step. This is a big one though. It's like 40 passes of that same test. Then the light is off, right? The light's off after three, but 40 passes, the light and the code will actually both be gone. So even us as technicians, we can plug the scan tool in and we won't see anything with 40 passes. Now this is how Volkswagen and Audi do it. Uh, I feel like that may or may not, I'm not really 100% sure, be an ODB thing, but that is how Volkswagen Audi does it. 40 passes of a test, the light clears, the fault clears, we have no information. The only time that really happens is with misfires. You can have a problem. You can have, let's say, a coil failure. It'll misfire, and it won't see another failure for like a big, long stretch of time. I've actually had this happen to me exactly on my uh, on my B5.5 Passat, 1.8 Turbo Passat. So uh, it, it can happen. It does happen. It's really rare, though, that nothing is stored. It just may be that the light's not turned on. So again, three passes of those tests, Matthew, and uh, the light clears, the customer... May or may not worry about it. I don't know. We do get a lot of, though, customer says check engine light comes and goes. And again, it's because it's passing sometimes and failing sometimes. So generally, in the verbiage of the fault, you'll see, you know, I don't know, EVAP flow too low or EVAP incorrect flow. And it'll say intermittent instead of static, which intermittent is intermittent. And static is a hard fault. That means it's failing every single time. So Matthew, great question. Guys, keep them coming. Email me at charles at humblemechanic.com. Be sure, be sure to be sure, be sure to subscribe on YouTube. And uh, yeah, you know what? Check out humblemechanic.com. I don't really talk about the blog too terribly much, but uh, a lot of great information over there. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, obviously Snapchat, trying to do a lot of cool things on Snapchat. So uh, there's my ramble when I forget what I got to say at the end of a video. Um, so guys, again, keep them coming and uh, thanks a lot.